From Tucson's Golden Pin Lanes, we're here for the title matches of today's JBT event. And don't blink and you'll miss this, as we got two very anxious handicap division bowlers both looking for their first career titles. They might be up before the pins get set. It's top seed Scott Wilhelm going up against the number two seed Jared Walker, so one versus two here. The handicap difference is 23 pins. Scott, who's on the right there, has to beat Jared on the left by 23 to tie and 24 to win. And in the first frame, they both trade open frames off of those spares, so no harm, no foul there so far. Jared defended his seat with a semifinal win over Rashad Jordan, 219 to 175. Before that, it was all Rashad, 230-176 over Trevor Thompson from California. And Rashad opened with a 176-168 to win over Candace Gardner from Surprise. Beautiful shot there from Walker. Two Tucsonans defending the home turf here very well. The 1-2 seeds here in the northwest corner of Tucson. High hit leaves a four pin for Wilhelm. Scott completely dominated this tournament. He led from game two on, and he was almost double any other bowler by the end of the tournament. And that can be a two-edged sword because you, you feel like you've already won the tournament once. Now you have to go out and win it a second time in only a one-game match where any bowler knows anything can happen. That's the nature of the beast. Bye, staff department. They're on. And this time a high hit for Walker and doesn't break up the split, leaving the real tricky 4 7 10 over there. We talk a lot in these other videos about the. Uh, Pre-shot routine is something I mention a lot, meaning it's it's a moment before each frame where higher average bowlers kind of take a second to get their body and mind both ready to throw the ball. Scott has a small pre-shot routine. Jared and the other previous bowlers have little to none, which is why Scratch is only in game two and we're only here in game four. As they mature, it's something to, to look for, taking a little bit more time than they're bowling right now. But right now, the uh, adrenaline and the anxiety is flowing through both of them. And almost gets the Brooklyn there, but leaves the 10. 10 frames go back, go by awfully quickly, especially when you're in uncharted territory here bowling for titles. And Wilhelm will take the Brooklyn there. It doesn't look quite as locked, oh dear. Doesn't look quite as locked in as he was in earlier matches. But the same can be said for Jared right now, too, who uh, came in at a 137 average, qualified at plus 18, which was pretty good today, pretty low scores. And then his big game was a 241 effort in game six. That kind of vaulted him up into the top five here. And there's his best shot of the title match, 10 in the pit form. Much needed strike right there. We'll see if Willem can double up here and put the screws to Jared. Another runaway Brooklyn. The lanes are obviously drying out as, as bowlers have to adjust to those drying out lanes throughout the day. Scott looking like he's still using a pretty aggressive bowling ball and that ball looks like it's hooking a lot on him right now. Goes without saying. Let's see if he can cover the corner pin. Switches to a ball that doesn't hook. But, ooh, slides by it, and another open frame given back to Walker. Now a big opportunity for Jared to cap capitalize on his strike. Let's see what he's got in the tank here. Mm. Looks like it's going to be a battle of the Brooklyns the rest of the way here as both players' equipment just putting on a left turn signal right now. It's tough for Cameron to even get a shot off on the pair to his left. Cameron takes his time anyway, but he's really uh, letting these guys work it out here. Hang on! Oh, he just can't miss that many spares. Jared. Got an order for chicken. Jared, with this spare shooting display, Jared obviously taken after his namesake. <laughs> Hospitality director Jared Flores is 
This is the only other J-E-R-O-D, Jared, we've seen on tour in quite a while, that's how Jared Flores spells his name too, so Flores says, of course, this is the correct spelling. Oh, wow, a bad break there. That wasn't that bad a shot, but the 410 is up. I wish I could convince Walker to just to take a breath and regroup here, but it's probably not going to happen. Pretty good shot by Scott, keeping the ball in the pocket this time, leaving only the four. You gotta cover up. Wow, gotta cover up the spare, does Scott, and a pretty good attempt at the split from Walker. Well, let's try and take a peek at the score here, as <laughs> we're barely able to keep up with them. 77 in the seventh for Walker. If Willem does spare this, he'll have a potential 115 in the seventh, so he's up by 38 with the spare, and again, giving 23, so. Overall at 15 if he spares it. If not, we'll be close to even. Look out. All right. As dominant as Wilma has been all day long, if, if Jared loses this match right now, it's his own nine misses that he'll have to blame. It's your bowling. Uh, you guys have never been in this situation before. Yeah, and comes up with a great shot in the eighth frame. I don't know what that is. <laughs> we are six minutes and 24 seconds in, and we are in the ninth frame. This is also saving a lot of tape. Big advantage Van Sickle coming up as Cameron's got to burn his last mulligan over there. Wow, and Wilhelm comes up high in his eighth frame and leaves the tricky 3 6 10, especially with their balls both hooking more than they're able to control right now. 3 6 10 gets really, really difficult. I hope he'll switch to that ball that doesn't hook much to shoot at it. And I don't think he is. No, he's not. And there is the result, is the chop right away. I hate to say I saw that one coming, but when the lanes are hooking like that, throwing your strike ball leaves that chop in play. And a huge opportunity for Walker right here. This guy's fun to watch. He's full of energy. Let's see if he can come up with a shot of his career here. Maybe. Wow, you bet. You just, you just never know what you're going to get out of these lower average bowlers. And all of a sudden, he comes up with a flush double in the eighth and the ninth. Let's see if Wilhelm can respond. Toughest situation he's been in all tournaments. High again. Obviously he knows he's going high. It's just a matter of, gee, I was plus 200 all day, 240 even all day. It's, it's tough to suddenly have to make that set of adjustments. Nice job with that spare though. Again, Walker getting 23. Impatiently waiting for the rack to set up. He's got to get it wide right to have a chance at the pocket. All right. Whoa, oh, man. Gutsy shot to send it right out to the edge and a ring in 10. Let's see what Scott can do here. Hard to tell exactly where we are at this pace. Oh, same shot he had in the eighth frame on this lane. Uh oh, Jared's gonna miss that spare though. So he finishes up with 134 scratch, plus 23 for 157. Spare strike is a tie, if I understand it right. I believe if he goes spare strike, you guys tie. What's the difference? 23. First things first, he missed the spare before. Oh! And he misses it the second time, and that costs him the match. Man, it was really a nobody wanted a match, but at the end, that double by Walker was just enough, and he becomes a JBT champion. Yes, you. 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 <laughs> Tough pill to swallow for Scott, who bowled absolutely fantastic all day long. But it comes down to that one game and in a war of attrition, Jared Walker. Wins it all. My goodness. Strange one there. We'll be back for Scratch Division action about an hour from now when we get to their title match.